Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. January 15 every year is always marked by Nigerians around the world as the Armed Forces Remembrance Day of the country where the efforts, the sacrifices, heroism of the United Nations Armed Forces are celebrated. Now, it starts with the launch of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day emblem and appeal fund. You can see we will have our own emblem on today. And of course, um, this year, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration was held with Nigerians celebrating and remembering the efforts of the armed forces across the 36 states of the country and the FCT Abuja. Of course, social media was awash with uh, a lot of uh, beautiful words and videos um, praising and celebrating the Nigerian Armed Forces. To look at the Armed Forces Remembrance Day and what it means for Nigeria, uh, the implications and whether we should be celebrating anything at this point, we have as guest this morning on the breakfast retired Colonel Hassan Stan Labo. Good morning to you uh, Colonel Hassan Stan Labo. Thanks for joining us on Plus TV Africa. Thanks so much Kofi. Thanks for having me once again. Um, do Nigerians have any reason to, to celebrate um, its armed forces bearing in mind the situ security situation in the country in recent years? Yeah thank you once again. Of course Nigerians have a to celebrate uh, the fallen heroes. Uh, these are gentlemen who had laid down their lives for the rest of us to be alive, who had laid down their lives for the unity of our country. Of course, we have, the, we have every reason to celebrate them, despite the ongoing situation of our life. Okay, Colonel Sambu, um, I would also like to ask, what would you say uh, the challenges of, you know, the armed forces as we, you know, are in the midst. I mean, we're actually currently in the midst of an insurgent and combatant security challenges. What would you say are the challenges of this armed force men? You mean the challenges are far to the veterans or you mean the entire armed forces? The entire armed forces. Of course, our challenges are enormous, I would say. Uh, given the current situation in which we find ourselves, we are a nation at war, as at now. So the challenges are meeting the requirements in executing this war. We know how much that could eat deep into our budget, more so when there are also other competing sectors within the economy that would also require huge sums of uh, 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 allocations. Talking of very important sectors like education and health. Whatever the case, addressing the issues within the armed forces, what will be the greatest challenges for now? Uh, when we begin to talk about uh, uh, issues of manpower, okay, since we are at war, uh, we need to really beef up strength now to ensure that we have enough men to execute the war. And uh, more so, given our own peculiar situation in Nigeria, whereby uh, besides the war situation in the northeast, we also have all sorts of problems all over the country requiring the presence of, uh, of police. And we don't have enough policemen to police the entire nation. So the military has got to be drafted in. If that is done, it further deepens on the need for manpower. Besides manpower, look at funding. All right? Uh, there is a need for huge funding now to be diverted to the military to meet a lot of commitments here and there. Um, you can't keep soldiers in the field without feeding them. And you, you, you feed them, I would say, <laughs> beyond what they need. Because uh, a hungry man cannot really give you the best. All right? Uh, we have logistics and equipment issues within the armed forces that must be addressed. Look at the Tokano aircraft we just bought, how much it cost us, and several other equipment. We are now talking about the need for drones. People like us are already screaming, why don't we have drones all over the entire place, given the huge... Hello, Carlo. ...of drones to a weapon capability, and so on. Yes, please. Yes. So when we address the issues of drones, when we address the issues of drones, we have taken a great deal of the logistics uh, uh, equipment issues 
required in the in, in the field because with with the absence of manpower when you bring in certain equipment like the drones and so on they'll be able to fill up the gap to a, to a greater extent if we are hesitant at recruiting and i wonder why we are hesitant at recruiting the unemployment situation in the country is that so high all right how about training how about welfare motivation um we could go on and on and on the issues are just there but with time, I believe we shall surround them. We shall surround them. We already seen some rays of hope. I think we shall surround them. Uh, th thank you very much, Colonel Hassan Stanlabo. Um, we'll come back to the the issues around the wealth of the military in the Nigeria of today. But I'm sure you'll agree with me that um, the Nigerian Armed Forces of Nigeria, the AFN, is widely celebrated all over the world uh, with its involvement in peacekeeping, you know, in the United Nations, um, the economic community of West African states with ECOMOG and other West African interventions, even with the African Union, a very fantastic track record. But when we look at the performance of the Nigerian armed forces at home, some Nigerians have raised some concern about that performance. Um, what would you say about that? The contrast between the performance and the conduct of soldiers on assignment abroad versus the conduct, performance, and results of the Nigerian armed forces with the conflicts within its borders. Uh, you are taking me to an area I really don't like uh, discussing because it always makes me to want to do a comparison between leadership at a strategic level in my country and probably what we have outside coming in from international organizations like the UN. Indirectly, you are trying to tell me why is it, you are asking me why is it that we perform so well outside and see, and today we are noticing certain uh, lapses and so on. What I will tell you, and I will explain. I was the first uh, uh, officer commanding from Nigeria to have commanded men in the Dapur. I was then a bloody major. Right? When I did that, my unit, as at that time, had at my disposal six helix patrol vans, all under my command. I repeat, all under my command. The point I'm trying to make here is this. When you want a job done, you must provide for it. My unit was virtually involved in patrol and ensuring that we keep the communities safe. I had pilots who were under my command. At any moment of the day, I could hop into any of those planes and move off and survey the entire community and come back and land and the driver brings me back to town. At my own time. Okay, we still have um, a conversation. Do we have such latitude, both in terms of... Hello? Hello? Ye yes, are you there, Richard Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo? Okay, um, we will try and reconnect with him, but um, uh, Mercy, it's quite interesting, um, of course, um, the, the fact that the Nigerian Armed Forces is being celebrated by Nigerians. I mean, I saw the posts on social media, very interesting, different designs, so almost every major corporate organization put a good word out there for the armed forces. You know, so, so for me, I think that, you know, it's a time where we should pay attention to the struggles and the challenges of the armed forces, as it were. Of course, we expect that uh, they're supposed to discharge their duties. But the, I'm, I'm hoping that we're able to connect with him and then we'll probably get an answer, share his thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. So we, we hear of cases where uh, these heroes that have actually fallen left families and they have children and all of that. How far, how far have we, you know, cared and catered for their needs? And yeah. you have a, a time where some persons are saying, I mean, you have these widows crying out, talking about not being uh, taking care of life insurance and what have you. But we do have uh, Cornel Hassan back uh, on the line. Can you hear us? Cornel Hassan, Stan Lambo, can you hear us? I am just like me. You are not loud enough. Okay. Okay, so... 
uh, we're working on top of we're working on that, and I'm sure that we'll have you know very strong audio. But the question here now is: There's been an outcry by families of fallen heroes that they have been neglected by the Nigerian government. And some of them are talking about life insurance, uh, no payment, and they're unable to take care of their kids. Is this a reality of, uh, you know, families of fallen heroes? Well, I want to, I want to believe I talk to you very well. There are lots of something issues with the veteran community that needs to be addressed. And that is why some of us frown at what we have come to see as uh, the, 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 the annual ritual of January 15. Okay? Being more of a duty. Can we just concentrate in addressing the problems of this veteran? All sorts of problems exist. As we speak right now, the veteran community in Nigeria is being owed 24 months of uh, the minimum wage area. 24 months, that's two billion. That was something at a December last week. We are already approaching February. So this problem should be addressed. Look at the medical issues of the veteran. How come a veteran in Nigeria does not have 100% medical coverage. When we are talking about individuals who are within the ages of 60 or 70 and above, the bulk of the issues they have medically were derived from oppression while in the military. Why are we now abandoning and neglecting them? Only to pay more attention to general. It's a bunch of duty. Hmm. We, 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 we just have to address this issue and make this man happy. The rights of the fallen heroes are there. How much care is being taken upon them? There is this allowance called the security development allowance, which is meant to take care of retirees when they retire. This amount is fixed there. It is meant to be better from carrying out action that could be limited to the uh, Nigerian state. The payment of this allowance is still an issue to today. Hmm. These are monies that are our allowances that are paid in several other civilized tribes. It has gotten to our town where we are. All sorts of drama is going on. Rather than paying this veteran this money and let them know that the Nigerian is taking care of them. Uh, there are all sorts of things. Uh, Colonel, uh, where, 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 yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, Colonel, but where, where is the issue coming from with all these uh, monies being owed for so many months to the families of retired uh, heroes and soldiers? Is it from within the military uh, establishment itself or is it from the executive arm of government? All of them. I repeat, all of them. The government or the administration in power is completely simple. All of them. Whether it is the military hierarchy, whether it is the Ministry of Finance, whether it is the presidency, somebody should be able to take enough credit of looking into this thing and addressing the problem. The military pension board is there. It has its own problem. The Ministry of Defense is there. It has its own problem. The Ministry of Finance is there. It has its own problem. The Ministry of Defense is there. It has its own problem. It's all, it is the best thing for us. Can somebody just take it upon himself to address this issue? and stop embarrassing the Nigerian state. Of late, veterans were on the street, all over the place, a few days back. They had to run around and see that they put together so that they do not embarrass the general uh, celebration. It's all over now, everybody has kept quiet. It should be addressed. 
So are you saying that the ceremony, the event every 15th of January is just a ceremony and it doesn't really translate to uh, development and uh, any impact on the lives of uh, fallen heroes or veterans uh, who uh, still live and those... Okay, so my question is, are you saying that the event every 15th of January the Remembrance Day, as we know, it's an event that has happened every other time. And of course, uh, on the 15th, Nigeria celebrated across the entire country. Are you saying that it's just a ceremony and that there's no impact on the community, the veteran community that you have mentioned and their families? My sister, the average veteran in Nigeria today is not a happy man with the Nigerian state. All this generic is the thing. It's provocative to them. Because as far as they are concerned, or as far as we are concerned, that money you spend there, the billions you spend in all those cities, would have gone a long way in addressing some of these problems. Okay? It would have gone a long way in addressing some of these problems. So the whole ceremony we are having there, a good number of us don't really appreciate it. Because we are not doing the right thing. And that is why even the day, as represented by the spirit today, are refusing to fly. Because they know you are not doing the right thing. I don't know if that's of this year too, because I didn't even know what is on the television. All right? Okay, uh, 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 retired Colonel Hassan Stanlam, but that's, that's uh, quite a, a statement to say he didn't even watch it on television. Uh, it shows how you and possibly uh, other retired um, uh, soldiers and members of the armed forces feel about what's happening. And I do hope that the message is being passed on to the authorities that they need to take the welfare of our retired soldiers and the families of the, uh, those who are fallen heroes very seriously uh, because you are saying it's not just about the 15th of January alone. Um, so, co some corporate organizations... Yeah. Yes, sir, the please go. The President is a veteran. The Minister of Defense is a veteran. The Minister of Defense is a veteran. The Minister of Defense is a veteran. Yes, veterans in the country are having problems. Is something not wrong with Nigeria? Is something really not wrong with Nigeria? The Minister of Health is a doctor. The Labour Minister who, who prevails over all issues of labour is a, also a doctor. Yes, medical doctors are not one of the greatest students in Nigeria. Is something not wrong with us in Nigeria? So, so Connor, uh, uh, Connor we, we've had, we've had um, involvement of, of uh, corporate Nigeria recently, of course. Um, one airline and some other companies have come out to offer free services or discounted services to um, uh, to the rank and file members of the armed forces. And what role can the private sector and corporate Nigeria play as far as the um, army veterans are concerned to also help uh, some of these things that you're complaining about? We could have an infrastructure on ground or a platform on ground which allows for the public to make donations or fire in resources, okay, which will be managed not by government officials, because government officials should bring the corruption, not by government officials. Such money will be managed probably by a team from the veterans themselves and part of the donors. Now, for such money, certain uh, development to be made, either by way of such loans to enable veterans to be able to uh, put up a, a two or three bedroom. The, 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 the fund itself is such that it is more of a philanthropic platform. So, in the course of payment, we should be very, very light. Maybe 3% of the man's salary per month or 5%, the man will be paying gradually. 
However, when the man attains the age of 80, such a loan should be wiped off. That is the uh, philanthropic, you know, uh, uh, thought that comes into bear on it. So, such a platform should be created. Secondly, I must say thank you to people like uh, the chief executive officer of uh, the airline that has just come up with some a form of uh, recognition for the veteran community. There is now a boarding policy in the Peace Airlines which allows for veterans to board first and so on. This is what we find abroad. We could also replicate this in several uh, 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 shopping complexes, okay. like ShopRite and so on. Okay. Whereby, as a veteran, when you shop, you enjoy a reasonable discount, provided you are able to fully identify yourself. Okay. This is common in the U.S. Right? It's common in the U.S. There are lots of other things. All right. Uh, very interesting having you on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa, a retired Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo. It's been a pleasure having you, and uh, we do uh, hope that um, the things improve and change. And we'll continue to have this conversation uh, uh, to pass a message on to those in authority that our soldiers, our veterans are very important to us. Thank you very much, sir. All right, then that's the much uh, that we can take at this point in time. The size of the show, it's been a uh, you know, very interesting conversation. Absolutely. I will Absolutely. definitely return with the breakfast tomorrow. Time, time again is 7 o'clock. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Do have a great day ahead. It's been great doing this with you, Mercy, for the first time. <laughs> My name is Kofi Bartels, and we'll be back tomorrow.